Hi, I'm Petr Popescu and welcome back to my course on Spring Boot. In this lesson, we'll be looking on how to construct uh, URLs or endpoints that have dynamic parts in them. There are two ways of doing this. One, it's either by having request parameters. Those are the part of the URL that go after the actual endpoint and start with uh, an question mark and are separated by end or well, dynamic parts that are directly in the URL. For example, you can request the details for a user with a specified ID and have the ID directly in the URL part. This is a lot used during the development of RESTful endpoints. Spring makes things very, very easy to do this. I already took the privilege of making a simple endpoint here with request parameters .html. This is how I named it. And I already have three parameters. I have a request parameter, which is an ID. And this uh, has the name of the ID. The name will be uh, how it will be uh, identified in the actual URL. I have another request parameter with name status. I have a default value for it, which is optional. And I also made it uh, the parameter optional. That is why it is required false. And I also have another uh, parameter. I just named it param. Again, it is required false. And I made it an optional string. Now, if we run our application, go to our browser, and you will see that I have ID equals one, two, three, and it is printed in the page. I didn't provide a status because it is optional. However, I provided a default value for active and it is printed. And the parameter, the last parameter named param is not present. Now, if we add status and parameter, the last parameter param test, you'll see that everything works as intended. We have the status printed as deleted, exactly as it is in the URL, and param test. Now, let's get back to our code. And as you can see, I have a default value but required false here. Is this still needed? Why do I need to specify that it is not required even though I have a default value? Well, the default for required, if we go here, and we'll see that it is true. So if I have required false, will this still work? If I have a uh, the required uh, attribute not set, it will default to true. However, I have a default value provided. And now if we go back to our browser and let's see what happens. Sorry, first let's recompile our code without the required here. Now let's go back to our browser and let's have just ID one, two, three. And as you can see, the endpoint still works. This is because even though this is technically required by Spring, when it is not present, Spring auto-populates it with a default value. So even if I don't put active, uh, uh, if sorry, even if I don't put required to false, it is still optional if I provide a default value. As you can see, I have uh, SonarLint here, and uh, it says that optional shouldn't technically be used as input parameters. I have my own opinion on this, and you can read it on my blog. However, let's see what happens if uh, I take into consideration Sonar's suggestion and just have parameter. So now I don't have uh, an optional, so I can't use this line of code. 
So I have to, uh, to know what happens if I don't provide a parameter. And in this case, it just defaults to null. So if parameters equals null, if it's not equals to null, sorry, then we can append it. And this, uh, this if statement is exact, has the exact same effect as we had previously. Previously, we had an optional, and I check if it is present. Now I default it to a string parameter, so I check if it, if it is null. Now, if I recompile the code and go to our browser, we'll see that everything still works just as before, and if I add the parameter. Now it is printed in the page. Finally, let's look on what happens if we have a list here. So for example, parameter can have a list of strings. This means that I can provide param equals test and param equals test2. So let's have this. And now, instead of checking if param is null, let's use collection utils from Spring is empty param. And if it is not empty, let's append the list here. Let's uh, use streams to map to, uh, to a string. Let's just leave it as it is and see what happens. We recompile the code. And now I have param equals test. And it will, as you can see, it prints uh, a list of with uh, the one with one element test. And I can provide param equals test two and param equals test three. And now, as you can see, it prints test, test two, and test three. Springs makes things even easier. I can just provide the value separated by comma. And you can see that it prints test, test two, and test three. However, how do we know it doesn't just print this string, but actually a list with three elements? So let's stop our application place it in debug mode. It's currently compiling. And I placed a breakpoint here, just before appending, just so that we can see what the, what the values in the list are. Now, we, recom we go to our web browser, refresh the page. And as you can see, the param is a list of size three, and it has one element with test, one element with test two, and one element with test three, exactly as we provided. So when we have list elements, or even set, we can provide here exactly what uh, we need, either by having uh, the parameter duplicated, or by having the value separated by a comma. And Spring knows how to interpret this as well. Finally, let's look at the last way of having uh, parameters, and that is by using path variables. I have here another method which I created. It is the example I gave in the beginning when I have users, an ID, and details. And this ID will be a dynamic part. This means that I can have whatever ID I want here. So variables are under these brackets here. This is how you specify to Spring that this is a variable. And after that, in the method, I have a variable named uh, user ID, and it has an annotation named path variable. And the name is the 
uh, string or the name that I used here in the URL. So I have ID and ID. And I just print a string. Now, if I go back to our browser, actually, let's recompile the application first. Let's go back to our browser and I have a URL here, user equals one, two, three, or whatever I want. And on the page, I see that I request the details for user one, two, three. If I change this to 12, it is user 12. So this is how you have path variables, which allow you to develop uh, endpoints that have dynamic parts and you can have how many dynamic parts you want here you can have name for example or another i don't know pin sorry pin and everything will work as long as you have path variables provided here as well now we have three so i have i need to have another path variable and another path variable so the number of variables i have in the url is the number of uh, attributes or input the parameters for our method that need to have the at path variable annotation and you can combine even path variable with request parameter and everything will work as long as you construct the URL properly. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, I will be showing you how to send information to an endpoint so that you can have uh, uh, information submitted either as a JSON for RESTful endpoints or as, uh, as a the form from the form from the from an html page this way we can construct uh, complex web applications that uh, accept user input and return data accordingly thanks for watching and i hope i'll see you again in the next lesson bye